Chapter 2, Section 6, Proving Statements About Angles The properties of angle congruence are reflexive. For any angle A, angle A is congruent to angle A, or any angle is congruent to itself. The symmetric property, which says if angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. And the transitive property, which states that if A angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. Reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of congruence should start be starting to look familiar to you. We've talked about these three when we were talking about solving algebraic expressions or equations. And again, yesterday when we talked about segment congruence, and now we see the same three properties for angle congruence. They all have the same idea for all three of those things, only it's applied to angles today, it was applied to segments yesterday, and to algebraic expressions on um, the previous section. The first example says that we are given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. We are asked to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Notice that we are given the triangle to the right as to, that we can look at, showing angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember when we're writing a proof, we always start with what we are given. Notice what we're given is in yellow. I am going to rewrite those for my first statement of this proof. And the reason why you know your first statement is that you are given this information in the problem. Always look at what you're given. You're gonna have to use that information to write your next step or your next statement. Keep in mind we're trying to prove that angle one is congruent to angle four. I need angle one to be first when I'm writing the congruent. So look at the first statement, angle one is congruent to angle two. And then if you look at the last statement, angle two is congruent to angle three. Notice that angle one and angle three are both congruent to angle two. If you think back to the three properties we just talked about, I can say that angle one is congruent to angle three because of the transitive property of angle congruence. Now if you look at this statement that I just wrote, angle one is congruent to angle three, and the statement angle three is congruent to angle four, angle one and angle four are both congruent to angle three, so I can set angle one congruent to angle four, again using the transitive property of congruence. Notice that I was trying to prove that angle one is congruent to angle four, and that is my last statement. When, you have when your last statement is what you are trying to prove, you are done writing the proof. Always look for something that you can do from your given information. That is, should be your starting point. You have to look at, at your given information. That is where you come up with your next uh, following statements. Example two says the measure of angle one equals 63 degrees. Angle one is congruent to angle three, and angle three is congruent to angle four. They're asking us to prove that the measure of angle four equals 63 degrees. Again, always when we're writing a proof, start with what you were given. I'm gonna rewrite what's in yellow for my first statement. And the reason that I have this information is that it was given to me in the problem. Based off of what we are given, I could do two different things right now. Notice I have one angle one congruent to angle three and angle three congruent to angle four. I could do something there. I could also do something with the fact that the measure of angle one is congruent to 63, and then I see that the measure of angle one is congruent to angle three. I'm going to start, because I'm trying to get angle four equal to 63 degrees, I'm going to start by trying to get angle 1 and angle 4 set congruent to each other. So if you look at angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 because of the transitive property of congruence. Now, remember yesterday I said that when we are dealing with numbers and measures, we're going to use an equal sign and when we're dealing with notation, 
we generally use a congruent sign. Because I'm trying to get the measure of angle 4 equal to 263, a number, I need angle 1 and angle 4 to be equal to each other. So I'm going to say that angle 1 equals angle 4, and that is just the definition of congruence. If two angles are congruent to each other, then their measures are equal. Now using the first statement, the measure of angle 1 equals 63, I am going to be able to substitute in the fact that angle 4 equals 63 degrees because I can substitute 63 instead of angle 1. Notice I have proven uh, my last statement is what I was trying to prove, so I am done writing this proof. The right angle congruence theorem states that all right angles are congruent. To be a right angle, and it has to measure 90 degrees. So all right angles have a measure of 90 degrees. And if all right angles have the same measure, then all right angles are congruent. Example 3 says that we are given that angle DAB and angle ABC are right angles. And we're also given that angle ABC and angle uh, BCD are congruent. It asks us to prove that angle DAB is congruent to angle DC, uh, BCD. I'm sorry. Always, always, always when you're writing a proof, your first statement is your givens. And the reason for your first statement is that it was given to you. The only way that you have that information is because it was given to you in the problem. There are... Um, using the theorem that we just talked about, the fact that all right angles are congruent, instead of ha uh, because I'm told that angle DAB and angle ABC are right angles, I can say that angle DAB is congruent to angle ABC because of the right angles congruence theorem. Remember, I'm trying to prove that angle DAB is congruent to angle BCD. Notice the last statement that I'm given is angle ABC is congruent to angle BCD. And then notice that in the next statement that I just wrote, I have angle DAB congruent to angle ABC. Both of these angles are set congruent to angle ABC. So using the transitive property of congruence, I can drop out the ABC and I can say that angle DAB is congruent to angle BCD because of the transitive property of congruence. Notice that my last statement is what I am trying to prove, so I am done writing this proof. The congruence supplement theorem says if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then they are congruent. Using notation, it says that if the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equal 180, and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equal 180, then the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 3. Notice angle 1 and angle 3 both added to angle 2 equal 180, so the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 3 have to be the same. The congruent complements theorem is going to be very similar to the supplement uh, supplements theorem, However, now it says if two angles are complementary to the same angle or congruent angles, they are congruent. So if the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 90, and the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6 equals 90, then the measure of angle 4 uh, is congruent to the measure of angle 6. If you choose a, an angle measure to plug in for five, the measure of angle 5, so let's say that I said that the measure of angle 5 was 40. So what plus 40 equals 90? Well, that would make the measure of angle 4 50. And then if you plugged 40 in again for the, for the measure of angle 5, what 40 plus what equals 90? And that would make measure of angle 6 equal to 50. So no matter what you plug in for the measure of angle 5, the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 6 have to be the same because they have to add up to the same num with the same number to equal 90. Example 4 
We are given that the measure angle 1 equals 24 degrees. You're given that the measure of angle 3 equals 24. And you are told that the uh, angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary and angle 3 and angle 4 are complementary. They're asking us to prove that the um, angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Notice our, pic our diagram to the right. You can draw on your diagram if you need to to help you understand what you what information you're given. I'm going to start with rewriting what I was given. And the reason why I can write that is that it was given information in the problem. If you notice, always look for at your givens to see what postulates or theorems that we can use to get started. Okay, so just start somewhere. If you look at the first two statements, it says the measure of angle 1 equals 24 and the measure of angle 3 equals 24. Both of these measures, uh, these angles are equal to 24. You could also start with the fact that angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary and angle 3 and angle 4 are complementary. Either pl starting place is going to be okay, but looking at the first two statements, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. The reason why I can say that is that they are both set equal to 24, and I can use the transitive property of equality to say that to drop out the 24 and set the measure of angle 1 equal to the measure of angle 3. Notice now that angle 1 and angle 3 are complementary to angle 2 and angle 4. So because angle 1 and angle 3 have the same measure, and then angle 2 is complementary to angle 1 and angle 4 is complementary to angle 3, I can say that the measure of angle 1, oh, I'm sorry, before I can do this, I have to set that say that they are congruent to each other because it is the congruent complements theorem. So I'm just going to go from equals to being congruent because of the definition of congruent angles. Now I can use, I can say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 using that congruence complements theorem that we just talked about. Angle 2 and angle 4 are complementary to two congruent angles. Because that is the case, I can say that angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent. Sometimes it really helps to go ahead and you could even off to the side in your, on your paper, you could go ahead and you could say, well, um, instead of for 20, for the measure of angle 1 equals 24, you could say, well, if the measure of angle 1 is 24 and angle 2 is complementary to it, then I know would know that the measure of angle 2 equals 66. Okay, and you, you could do the same thing with the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4. If they're complementary, then angle 4 would also have to be 66 because it has to add up to 24, add together with 24 to equal 90. The linear pair postulate says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. We've talked about a linear pair before. Remember, a linear pair are two adjacent angles that form a straight line. We know that a straight line measures 180 degrees, and we know that 180 degrees uh, angles that add up to 180 degrees are supplementary. The vertical angles theorem states that vertical angles are congruent. That should be something that we already know. We've already talked about it, but now we're putting a name to it, vertical angles theorem. Example 5, we are given that angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair and we are given that angle 2 and angle 3 are a linear pair. We are asked to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Always start with what you are given, and the reason is that you are given. Now, if you look at the diagram, you can see that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical, um, which the vertical angles theorem just said that vertical angles are congruent. But we cannot say that because it is not actually part of our given. The only thing that we can go off of right now is that angle one and angle two are a linear pair and angle two and angle three are a linear pair. We have to use that to prove that angle one is congruent to angle three. Notice angle one and angle three 
are a linear pair, are each a linear pair with the same angle, angle 2. Because angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair, I can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And I can say the same thing for angle 2 and angle 3. Because they are a linear pair, I can say that they are supplementary. That is based off of the linear pair postulate that we just were, said. Now, remember back a couple of slides ago, we said that if two angles are, are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then those angles are congruent. Notice here, I have angle 1 and angle 3, both supplementary to the same angle, angle 2. Because they are both supplementary to the same angle, I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by the congruent supplements theorem. Today's assignment is on page 113. It's numbers 10 through 22 even.